Link down below as always if you want to read this shite on your own. Game update. Biters. Behavior changes. The biters will now be more aggressive and bite a little wee bit harder. Kind of like Mike Tyson. Benchmark option on PC. You can start it from the video settings. Settings? Settings. LOD. Range multiplier. This feature is available in the advanced video menu, but watch out, Survivor. It takes a heavy toll on your performance. Motion sickness reduction preset available in accessibility menu. XESS Intel upscaler on PC rendering and lighting improvements. As usual, we've worked on bug fixes and issues, mostly focusing on the bloody ties DLC. Check the entire list down below. Gameplay updates fixed a problem with getting on a bicycle after starting the bicycle challenge, allowing players to complete the task. Fixed an issue on PS5 during the markers of Plague Quest related to Aiden being stuck after injecting the first inhibitor. It was steroids. He was too big. He couldn't get, you know, off. He was stuck. Anyways. Fixed an issue where the player could not progress with the combat challenge because of missing interaction prompt. No shortcuts. Removed a spot in the opera that allowed players to skip all madmen from Vildor phases. Fixed the black screen after canceling the Prince of Thieves challenges or after starting the Tower of Babel challenge. Tweaked skull face resistances to elemental damage, making him more challenging than before. As well as an issue where biters sometimes dealt zero damage to the player. After being bitten for, you know, eight months, all the scar tissue and all that, we're getting tough. Xbox and PlayStation players can no longer get stuck during the Crystal White quest. Fixed an issue where the finisher would not deal damage to Skullface, or where legendary encounters rewarding the players with only mutation samples, or an issue with missing objective marker when tracking the satellite dream quest, or with some zip lines floating in the air. Wee! Fixed progress lock during the water tower quest for PS4 only. Xbox preset items will be correctly given during the Prince of Thieves challenge and one day in Haran spectacle as well as an issue with outfits not being unlocked as quest rewards and the Bloody Ties DLC, or some shield mods being duplicated in the Craftmaster's upgrade tab, or an issue with weapon mods being improperly displayed when previewing multiple opera costumes. Headshots with the bows should now deal the appropriate amount of damage. Tweaked player damage scaling in the opera to make fights more challenging. Fixed human enemy AI, which no longer allows them to use Skullface skill set. Players are now able to drop rewards brought or bought from Carnage Hall rewards vendors. Swing animations are now faster to feel more on par with Dying Light 1. Oh, nice. I always kind of felt like it was a little slow. Fixed an issue with restarting challenges at the Opera. True Night Runner achievement should now be unlocked properly after completing all the Night Runner trials, as well as the Death Loop in the Opera after killing the guard. Mad Men of Villador Parkour Challenge Tweaks. Co-op updates. No one cares about the co-op for this game. Fixed crashes happening on Xbox when accepting invites to your friend's sessions. An issue where the fourth player to join the session would get stuck in the table during dialogue with Cerevis. That's because they couldn't believe that you had more than three friends on Xbox. Fixed an issue with a blocked checkpoint during the running up that tower challenge in co-op. Improved infected AI during Run Boy Run challenge in co-op, as well as an issue with unresponsive controls after joining a co-op session on PS4. The game will now inform you if you're trying to connect to a host that's currently playing a dialogue or a cutscene, or an issue where the guard was spawned on the player's location immediately failing the stealth mission, or an issue where players could get stuck in the infinite wait during the dialogue before the challenge, or where players were unable to proceed to the Mad Men from Villador Challenges. The trophy for the Madman of Villador will be unlocked in the co-op after completing the challenges, fixed multiple connection issues, or where players could be separated during the challenges, or where some icons were being too big in co-op. Between two fires, challenges progress is shared now, allowing players to finish it at once. Players are no longer able to bash through the doors that require the team to gather. Fixed an issue with challenges that caused players to be stuck. PS4 fixed the game crashing after completing a windmill challenge. Windmill, not windmill. Anyways, although the wind that blows in your mouth is like a meal because you're constantly eating. Anyways, Manica Shield Ice Mods are now upgradable. Forget what I said. 
fixed an issue with players unable to start quests in co-op. Manica Shield received sounds when playing in co-op. UI UX updates fixed the timer. Displayed during challenges in the Carnage Hall or an icon of one-handed silencer machete or with the Carnage Manica display in the accessory while inspecting it as well as an issue where players could reach restricted areas. Well, then I guess they weren't restricted now, were they? Or where the player was spawning in the incorrect locations after finishing the quests. Missing voiceovers during the opera quests. Well, from all that singing, you know, opera. Oh, right? It strains your voice and then eh, you lose it. Uh, I need more sleep. Fixed the asset load issue during the treasure hunt challenge. Added missing textures from the opera localizations. Improved camera motion during the Mad Men of Villador cinematic, as well as an animation that's been fixed of player blocking with a shield when the bow is equipped. Technical updates, sweet baby pineapple. There's a lot of shit here. Low quality preset and video option sets XSS on a PC with an AMD card and turns on DX12. Players will no longer lose their money. Damn it, I was siphoning all of that after accepting the best and reloading the game during Twin Brothers quests. Players will no longer get stuck while sliding into the vent shaft. I guess they lost some weight. Dawn Quicksoat achievement will now be granted after the player unlocks all the windmills in the game, as well as an issue with the game's performance dropping after playing more than an hour on some devices. See, even your console can get a little tired after all that running. I know I get tired after running for, you know, five minutes. So imagine an hour. I wish I could run an hour. Fixed the infinite loading screen that was happening whenever a player logged out of the account right after signing in. Fixed an issue with the sounds randomly disappearing. Or an issue with force feedback missing while playing on the gamepad. Xbox Prologue Forest will no longer be too dark. During the daytime, players are no longer able to bypass the perfect block tutorial. Exactly. Fixed an issue with Infected being too silent. PlayStation fixed a crash during one day in Haran and Fame and Infamy Challenge. Fixed a crash during the fast travel between the city and the opera. Ray Tracing fixed players' shadow missing in photo mode as well as fixed an issue with the corrupt lighting sources of Ray Tracing. Fixed the Baba Yaga Challenge being unplayable. Reduce the number of times infected will grab the player. AI player will no longer shake after getting grabbed by biters. Fix the game crashing after changing the resolution from 3840, 2160 to 1080p. Fix the infinite loading screen upon opening the title in offline mode on EGS launcher. Uh-huh. Optimized memory usage in the D3D12 mode improving game stability. Exposed the setting for extending rendering range of the highest level of detailed geometry. Ray tracing effects range have been extended by 20%. Implemented benchmark mode allowing users to measure their PC's performance in the dying light too. Fixed the lack of player shadows in photo mode when using ray tracing. Improved initial load times by up to 10 seconds on the PS4. Wow, that's pretty significant. Minor improvements to texture streaming. Improved tree shadows. Improved fog and water reflections quality. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, thankfully. As always, if you like the video, a thumbs up. It does greatly help. Support the channel with the algorithm. Didn't like it, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. As always, I'll bend it in half and twist it. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next video. Bye for now.